Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the F4J UK, of which is a currently Tier 7 11.3 VR premium jet fighter for the British Air Tech Tree. This vehicle currently comes in a pack that includes the F4J UK, 20 days of premium time, and 2,500 Golden Eagles, all for the current price of $69.99 USD. That said, in this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about this premium Phantom 2 variant, including its stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, I'll give it some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I feel if this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. With that said, if you like this kind of video, tea, biscuits, or you dislike being stuck in a BR bracket where every other plane does your job better than you do, then please consider subscribing to my channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now to start, I'll place its stat card here on the side of the screen. Important things to know are its rate of climb, its missiles, and of course, its battle rating. Now for how it plays. This is pretty much a standard F4J, except with some improvements and, of course, some things that are also worse. For example, while the F4J UK has access to the excellent Skyflash radar guided missile, of which is something that the standard F4J lacks, the UK variant does not have the helmet mounted sights of the standard Phantom J. Because of this, the UK variant can almost be seen as prioritizing mid range combat, with the Skyflashes also being good at close range, with the standard F4J being better at close range. Due to its superior helmet mounted sights. Though of course both variants are fairly similar to each in both ways, so in both close and mid ranges it's just that the standard F4J is slightly better at close range and the F4J UK is slightly better in mid range. Ultimately however, the F4J UK is not a meta defining aircraft, rather it just feels like a pawn in the world of the F16, F14, MiG-29 and really any other more advanced aircraft that comes out henceforth. So long as the F4 F4J UK at least stays in its same BR bracket. Because the F4J UK fights those aircraft, it is outclassed in almost every single way in every match that it plays, in that those planes have better missiles, performance, and so forth. As such, the F4J UK should be played a bit behind your allies, firing the sky flashes first at a close to medium range, assisted by the excellent pulse Doppler radar that this plane contains, then switching to the unfortunately mediocre AIM-9G missiles that it has. The sky flashes will typically offer you your best opportunity to kill enemies, as they have better range, G-overload, tracking capabilities, and explosive filler, but they also weigh more than two times as much as a Sidewinder and require continuous radar guidance until they hit or miss their target, where our sidewinders are essentially fire and forget, though they're best used against enemies that are unaware of your presence because they just simply are not all that good. Aside from this, the F4J UK has access to the very good 20mm GAL-4 gun pod for close range engagements. Thankfully, this is one of the key ways that the UK variant of the F4J is superior to the American variant, as the American variant has a substantially less accurate 20mm Mark 11 cannon that also contains substantially less ammunition and a lower rate of fire. Though of course you can drop the gun pod if you don't want it, which would leave you without any primary armament, though with markedly better performance. In short with the F4J UK, you should stay behind your allies, fire your sky flashes, and then use your good acceleration to get closer to the fray once it's already started. This plane unfortunately lacks the number of countermeasures needed, along with the performance and maneuverability as well as the missiles, to be one of the first into the hairball and consistently survive. Thus, you should stay on the outside and work your way in. Now for close air support, this plane is a mixed bag, but is of course still very good. It lacks guided anti-ground weapons, but has the ability to carry over 6,000 kilograms combined of ordnance, including up to 11 1,000 pound bombs or over 230 snap rockets, or some mix of the two, along with some air-to-air -air missiles. You could also use smaller bombs as well. With this large payload size, of course comes ballistic computers for both bombs and rockets, which will help to maximize the effectiveness of your airstrikes. The bad part of the aforementioned mixed CAS bag comes when you consider that, in order to maximize bomb and rocket payload, you must get rid of your 20mm cannon, and also the fact that it can only carry small caliber rockets and lacks bombs larger than 1,000 pound bombs. If nothing else, at least the bomb size is still plenty sufficient when combined with the ballistics computer, though I know that many people would strongly prefer, for example, Zuni rockets or something similar over SNEBs. These gripes aside, the F4J UK is still a fine close air support plane. Now with this said, let's get into its strengths and weaknesses 
weaknesses and first for its strengths. As a fantastic radar with long range, easy target locking, and of course, pulse Doppler capability. This helps to make the F4J UK into one of the best phantoms for mid-range combat. Second, it features Skyflash missiles, which have better tracker heads than comparable AIM-7E2 and AIM-7F missiles. Though of course AIM-7Fs do have higher range, but of course the Skyflashes are considered to be better when it comes to close range. Now for its third strength, it has a very large anti-ground ordnance payload, carrying up to 234 SNEV rockets or up to 11 1,000 pound bombs. When equipping missiles as well, the F4J UK can carry over 6,000 kilograms of ordnance. For its fourth strength, it features ballistic computers for both its bombs and rockets. Fifth, it has good top speed and acceleration, though it isn't top notch anymore, especially considering the new additions to War Thunder. Beyond this, it also has a very good roll rate. And finally, the F4J UK features premium RP and SL bonuses. Now, for its weaknesses, while it isn't the absolute worst, it has poor maneuverability, especially when compared to both newer fighters and, of course, its old foe, the MiG-21. For its second weakness, it is a very large aircraft, making it very easy to hit with cannons and missiles. Third, it lacks a standard cannon. Instead, you have to mount a gun pod underneath, which decreases performance substantially due to drag. It also consumes a pylon that could otherwise be used for bombs or rockets. For its fourth weakness, you can only equip that single cannon. Unlike many other Phantoms, including the Japanese ADD W that can carry up to three underneath the plane. For its fifth weakness, while of course 60 countermeasures is better than nothing, it is oftentimes insufficient for prolonged engagements at this BR. Beyond this, the best short range missile on this plane is the AIM-9G, which is mediocre at this BR, as it can only pull 18 Gs and has a substandard tracking head that is easily flared. The lower BR Japanese premium F4EJ ADDW has four AIM-9Ps, which are substantially better than what this plane has. And finally, while it isn't technically a weakness, it needs to be noted that unlike the American F4J, the UK version of course does not have the helmet mounted sights, which would otherwise allow you to target your missiles based on where you're looking rather than where your plane is oriented. Well, at least it doesn't have the ability yet, so who knows what the future may bring. Now with all this said, let's get into how I score this vehicle. Now first for dogfighting and air RB, I give it a 5.25 out of 10. While this plane would have certainly been impressive a little over a year before it was actually released, the meta has changed so dramatically in that relatively short period of time that the F4J UK has gone from being at one point possibly a top level fighter to now being give or take average at best depending on how you use it. It has competent performance, a great radar, great right air guided missiles, and mediocre close range AIM-9Gs. Almost every other plane that you'll face will have you beat in those categories, especially in regards to performance and with close range missiles as many of them have excellent all aspect missiles. If nothing else, the F4J UK still has its fantastic pulse Doppler radar and sky flash missiles that combine to make this a threat to enemy aircraft at close to medium ranges, regardless of how advanced your enemy is. The sky flash missiles are the sole thing keeping this plane at the 5.25 out of 10 score that I gave it. Without those, this plane would likely score a bit lower. Now for close air support, I give it a 6.5 out out of 10. This is a plane that relies on brute force rather than precision for close air support and it works. As it can carry upwards of 6,000 kilograms of ordnance, the F4J UK can strike hard, strike fast, and strike multiple times before flying back to base. In some ways, the top tier CAS meta is about the same as it has been for about the last year or two, so it will perform as well as ever, which is at least good news for the F4J UK. Regardless, this plane has limited options, in that it only has access to snap rockets and both 540 and 1,000 pound bombs, as well as its optional 20mm gun pod. None of these options are particularly impressive, especially being that it lacks truly guided ordnance, but again, at least you have your Blissus computers. In all, while not fantastic, the F4J UK is a bit above competent when it comes to CAS. Also because of the way that the pylons are set up, you can carry a full missile payload to conduct air cover operations following your close air support mission. Essentially, the F4J UK is a mallet-esque compared to a surgeon's scalpel. Now, 
Now overall, I give it a 5.5 out of 10, with of course dogfighting in the Air RB being weighed heavily compared to close air support. While the Skyflash missiles and Pulse Doppler radar are certainly high points on this aircraft, it just falls behind so many other aircraft in so many ways. The F-4J UK lacks good close range IR air-to-air -air missiles and only has decent performance for this BR. Further, it only has 60 countermeasures and an optional 20mm gun pod as its primary armament, of which adds a substantial amount of drag compared to an inboard cannon. Still, it can fly and compete decently if not used as a frontline aircraft in the way that people might use an F-16 or MiG-29. If BRs become substantially uncompressed, or if it receives a BR decrease, I could see this plane being more competitive. If nothing else, it can at least perform close air support well, though again, those Skyflash missiles and its post doppler radar are pretty darn sweet. Now with that said, do I recommend you to purchase this plane? As always, my disclaimer is that $69.99 is a lot to play for a digital item in a video game. Heck, even $60 flat or $50 flat is a lot. Regardless, this plane is clearly built for those that like radar-guided missiles and like mid-range combat, as the F-4J UK has again a fantastic radar and great Skyflash missiles, which are great at both close and medium ranges. On the other hand, the F-4J UK has, at 11.3 BR, AIM-9Gs, which are essentially uncaged AIM-9Ds with an improved warhead, despite having a lesser amount of explosive filler. Essentially, because of the type of warhead it has, I believe it's a continuous rod, it does actually a little bit more damage despite having, again, less explosive filler. Because of its relatively high BR and lack of a good close-range missile, I can't really recommend this plane as it currently stands. If you need a decent close air support plane, then the F-4J UK is totally fine, but that's unfortunately where it is best in comparison to the planes around it. And again, I don't really see a $69.99 price tag being worth it if you're just going to use a plane for close air support. Otherwise, it is totally swamped by other planes in its BR bracket, such as the F-14, F-16, and so forth. By itself, the F-4J UK is pretty good, but when in the skies with newer planes, which is what it's going to always be in the skies with, just being that it is in that sort of BR bracket, it simply is nothing that it does better than any anyone else, and is thus marginalized. The F-4J UK is good, but I can't say that it's worth $69.99 USD, at least not right now. Again, if we see a BR decrease or a decompression of BRs, this might be a bit more competitive, but for right now, it's just eh. So that being said, thank you so much for watching my video. Please, of course, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.